Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, comrades, brothers and sisters, uh, first of all, if I can just uh, take an aside to, to mention, as has been mentioned uh, several times, the question of the horrific attacks in, uh, in Paris. Uh, this week, we sent uh, a letter of solidarity to our brothers and sisters in the unions representing firefighters in France. Now, Paris is unique in that the firefighters there are part of the military, but firefighters generally in Paris and across the world are civilian, public sector, public servants, uh, and firefighters, along with doctors, nurses, and other public sector workers, were on the forefront in 9-11, in 7-7, in Paris, in Madrid, and in every other occasion when such attacks take place. And they are the very people who are now being pilloried and attacked by this government. In fact, here in London, where we saw a, a series of terrorist attacks uh, in 2005, and where our members went down into those tunnels to try to save people's lives and make them safer, uh, this mayor, Boris Johnson, has already forced through the closure of 10 fire stations and is now, at this very time, trying to force through a cut of a further 13 fire engines in the London Fire Brigade and 200 further firefighter jobs. What an utter disgrace and what an utter disgraceful mayor we have in the capital city. Now, after the election, the truth is, after the election, many people in our movement, in the trade unions, and many people in the Labour Party had already written off the 2020 election and saying that the Tories were going to win again in 2020. That's the confidence that they had, by the way, after May 2015. And in the Labour Party, a right-wing plan was hatched to launch a new way of electing a leader designed to prevent the trade unions from having this influence which the Labour Party has been criticised over and designed to prevent these so-called troublemaking activists from having an influence and the way they were going to do this was to open it up to the wider ordinary people who are going to keep the activists under control and it backfired in a stupendous way. Because we've been told for three decades by those in, pol in power and those in the political establishment that there is no alternative, there is no political alternative, no alternative to cuts, no alternative to austerity, no alternative to the anti-union laws. And we don't forget, by the way, that under 13 years of a Blair Brown government, they didn't do a jot to repeal the trade union, anti-trade union laws that have been in place. And if they had, and if they had, we wouldn't be starting from where we are now. The reason the Tories are able to do what they're doing to us today is because of the failure of Blair and Brown and the whole number of MPs who are now attacking Corbyn on the back of what's going on. But underneath what we've been told, underneath a mole was burrowing away and it emerged in that Corbyn campaign. People in their tens of thousands got involved to say, we do want an alternative, we demand an alternative, and that was the beginning of a mass movement, and that was successful in electing Jeremy Corbyn as Labour leader. And the question now is, what do we do next? And in my view, we need to organise and organise and organise and organise to build and develop that mass movement. There are, and it's already been mentioned, unprecedented attacks on Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell. They come daily from the media. The BBC is part of it. The supposedly progressive Guardian is part of it. And it is relentless. The attacks, the attacks come from within the state as well. We have anonymous generals making attacks on Jeremy Corbyn, and we have a generals who are not anonymous making attacks on Jeremy Corbyn. The attacks come from within the Labour Party and from within the parliamentary Labour Party in particular. And it is time to choose sides, and I know which side I am on, and I know which side my union and on the people on this platform and in this hall are on. Now, that doesn't mean endorsing every uh, policy or thing that Jeremy Corbyn or John McDonnell say, but it does mean demanding democracy in our movement. The idea that members of Parliament 
should have a uniquely privileged position in a political party is profoundly undemocratic. Democracy, <laughs> democracy means policy being determined democratically by the members of that movement and the members of that party through democratic conferences. And democracy means that the leaders, including its MPs, being controlled from those underneath, not the other way round. We, the truth is, the strength of our movements and the strength of that Corbyn campaign is not yet, hopefully, not yet in Parliament. It is out here in our unions and in our communities and in our campaigns and we need to draw that strength together. Mark has already made mention of, uh, of momentum and the idea of trade union momentum. I believe that momentum that is being launched around the country, people taking their own initiatives in towns and cities all over this country can provide the opportunity to do that. It needs to be democratic. It needs to be genuinely broad based. And that's why I also believe that we need a trade union aspect to momentum to be developed and built to be part of that wider campaign. It should draw together those trade unions and trade unionists who want to see that radical shift in politics. It could draw together left trade unions and left trade unionists. And we could, on that basis, set out the basis for building a new force in our unions, a new force that is uh, drastically needed for the battles ahead. Our movement, by the way, has defeated anti-union laws before many times. In 1971, for example, anti-union legislation was passed and was made law. It was defeated after it was made law on the back of a mass movement to release the Pentonville Five. And it was defeated not simply by calls on the TUC, and I do sit on the TUC General Council, as does my colleague, brother, comrade here to my left, Mark, but that was defeated not simply by calls on the TUC, but by a mass movement created in workplaces by rank and file trade unionists who took action regardless of what the TUC did or didn't do, and in reality dragged the TUC behind them. So we need to organise industrially and we need to organise politically. We need to see that campaign and co consolidate what was built during the course of the Corbyn election campaign. That means not getting thrown off course by attacks from the right wing and attacks from the media. That means defending radical pro-working class policies and not retreating on them. That means demanding democracy and accountability within our movement, and I believe a trade union momentum can be a key part of that. And finally, I'd just like to fin finish on this. We're trolled by the experts that, that in reality, the clever dicks in our movement, that in politics, that there's no room for big ideas anymore. It's simply the question of who can manage things better than the other side. It's simply about managing in some technocratic way the way of running the system. And that's supposedly what uh, politics comes down to. Well, I have to say, it's not particularly inspiring apart from anything else. And no wonder people are sick to the back teeth of politics and mainstream politics when you get that. Uh, and if it's true, we might as well let the bankers and corporations just get on with it if that is all that is on offer. But in our future, and indeed the future of our planet should be made not in the interests of the profit of a tiny minority, but rather by and in the interests of the vast majority, the working people of the world. For me, that is real democracy and real socialism. Let's put those on the agenda. And above all, let's get organised, organised and organised to fight back. Build this campaign, go out from here and get organised. Thank you very much.